Large submarines are also still a key component of the U.S. strategic defense plan, but their focus has been overhauled in line with new priorities. During the Cold War, the USS Florida prowled the oceans, equipped with Trident nuclear missiles, ready to carry out an attack at a moment's notice. In 2006, the 18,000-ton sub was converted from a ballistic missile-capable submarine to a guided missile submarine, making her one of the US Navy's most advanced ships. One of the Ohio-class submarines, the Florida is now capable of launching up to 154 Tomahawk missiles. The vessel measures 560 feet and has a cruising speed of 20 knots. It's also equipped with two lockout chambers that can rapidly deploy a team of up to 66 sea, air and land special forces. Navy SEALs can be secretly dispatched to volatile regions anywhere in the world. Inside, the submarine is a hub of activity as its 135 crew go about their daily tasks. Despite the cramped conditions, everything runs smoothly. The submarine's captain, Bill Traub, has overall responsibility for the vessel. The, the ship is very special because it's got the latest technology, it's got an incredible uh, ability to communicate even when the ship is submerged, much more so than other submarines. Uh, in the conversion process, the ship was converted to be a very uh, good platform for special operations forces and for land strike with conventional missiles. Captain Traub says the Navy regularly collaborates with other countries to improve security in the wider region. One of the other things that we do here in the region is working with other nations, working with the U.S. Navy, and we add additional capacity. So as a submarine here in the, in the region and as this specific submarine, uh, we're able to take away some of the burden from some of the other allied navies, take away some of the burden from other U.S. ships in providing security to the region. And again, this is uh, the ship has got such a, a greater capacity that we can let some of those other ships take on some other missions uh, that, that they're now fulfilling because we have the ability to fill that role. The Florida is currently deployed in the eastern Mediterranean. Missile tubes have been converted to allow Navy SEALs to exit and enter the sub. They may swim out in diving gear or onto specially designed mini-subs. Living conditions on board the Florida are certainly not spacious, but crew members still try to make it home-like. This is uh, my three boys. This is my oldest, Troy, and this is Trevor. And then little baby Trent, which he's trying to stay in here, of course, with some help. Inside the submarine's canteen, lunch is being served. A crew member's day is divided into shifts of six hours. Those on board the submarine have access to a gym, cafeteria, and the internet to keep in touch with loved ones. Hobson, one of the ship's crew, says he misses his family, but is happy to serve his country. Obviously, I can't take my family with me. I'm married and I have two kids, so that is one of the things I do miss, is just being with my family and having that time. But uh, when I'm out to sea, I'm serving my country, and so that's, that's what I'm here to do. He adds that his rigorous training has prepared him to face most of the dangers he may encounter. There's lots of dangers to being on board a submarine, obviously, because we are under the water uh, in an enclosed space. So there are, are threats of, of fires of, of that nature, but it's, that's not uh, a big deal because we are trained to combat those casualties. As lunchtime comes to an end, it's time for the crew members to head back to their posts and continue with their jobs. Um, everyone on board a submarine actually volunteers to do the job um, and they go through a, a rigorous training and qualification process so that we can prove to our, our superiors and the government that we can uh, do our job on board the USS Florida. Kirkpatrick says email helps him keep in touch with his family. For, for us, uh, keeping in touch with the outside uh, world here on USS Florida, um, we have a couple of different uh, avenues that we can take. We have email, which is which is wonderful on board USS Florida. When I first joined the Navy, we didn't have email, so that's that's wonderful. Um, also, as far as getting uh, news and sports, we get uh, what's called messages on board. The after deck of shipping is launched to the 
As well as allowing submariners to keep track of what's happening on shore, new technologies are transforming submarine sonar systems. The surveillance towed array sensor system, SIRTAS, low frequency active sonar, currently in use in the US Navy, sends extremely intense bursts of sound between 150 and 180 decibels at low frequencies into the water via a cable attached to an underwater speaker. But some experts are concerned that LFA sonar could be harmful to underwater mammals such as whales, which rely on their hearing and vocalizations for breeding, migrating and feeding. Introducing this intensity of, of sound into the ocean potentially affects not just marine mammals, but fish, fish eggs, and the integrity of the oceans as a whole. It's a very, very complex ecosystem, and if you begin to interfere in a significant way with, with one or two or three levels of that, that chain of life, you can upset the entire balance. But the Navy says that the decibel level is roughly equivalent to that found in the front row at a rock concert. You take the worst case as far as the energy right next to a transducer and you magnify that through the world and you put something else next to it, and yes, you could get a lot of deleterious effects, but if you look at how LFA really is going to be utilized and operated, and you look at the effects of how sound travels through the ocean, what animals are doing, you take a big picture look at that scientifically, and it doesn't really look nearly as bad as some people make it out to be. The sound bursts are used to detect very quiet diesel, electric, and nuclear submarines, which the Navy says are difficult to find using conventional passive sonar. So there's 150 seismic survey vessels, primarily looking for oil or exclusively looking for oil, which are considerably higher, you know, 10, 15 dB higher than, than Surtas LFA, and they're pinging all the time. As technology evolves, submarine developers continue to test and monitor new equipment to ensure it can safely share the seas with underwater creatures. Off Hawaii, the USS Pickerel, a guppy snorkel sub, prepares to test its power and toughness. It'll plunge down 150 feet to gain momentum for the greatest leap ever made by a sub. The 70 crewmen said they weren't hurt during the leap, they just held on tight. Submarines, stealthy, silent killers, and a symbol of man's ability to master the most extreme environments.